Linea alba, any questions about the linea alba? White line, mid-ventral. Lumbodorsal fascia, many of you, we've talked about it. If not, you've probably seen it. This is the lumbodorsal fascia. Lumbar region of the spinal cord, dorsal, lumbodorsal fascia. All I have on there is its, 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 its name, so you identify it. These guys went through it. Interesting couple of things about the lumbodorsal fascia. One is something that we will talk a little bit about tomorrow when I show you the video of the cheetah. Because we talked about cheetahs and how they ventroflex and dorsoflex, and that's part of what allows them to be fast organisms when they ventroflex. They stretch that lumbodorsal fascia. And that lumbodorsal fascia actually has elasticity to it so when they go so far they're stretching it and it rebounds so part of the force or part of part of what allows them to quickly then go into the dorsal um, flexion or, or extension is energy that's stored in that lumbodorsal fascia so that's part of one of their little tricks Another thing about the lumbodorsal fascia is what's underneath the lumbodorsal fascia, and you see these elongate muscles under here. Um, those are, just think about those, are, they are, you can think about them as epaxial musculature. Remember, epaxial, hypaxial from the shark. There it's sort of half epaxial and half hypaxial, where in mammals, most of the epaxial is just along and above the vertebral column. So relative to the rest of the body, the epaxial is pretty small. Now, all the rest of this is mostly derived from hypaxial musculature, most of what we're looking at. This is the epaxial. And third thing, I just, I think, yeah, some of this epaxial musculature is the tenderloin. Mm. Any of you guys know butchering? Yeah. The tenderloin. So I just had tenderloin looked up to see what I was eating. <laughs> Your wife was like, sit down. What no, 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 no. She, she knows me. She knows me. So anyway. Dinner's it, done. We yeah. call it, in deer, they're called backstrap. Yes. Tender? Well, backstrap yeah, is really fatty. Anyway, I'm not sure which one. It's more back here. But anyway, that's a side light. We're only on the second thing. Axillary region, inguinal region, inguinal region in here, axillary region in here. Important because and more important actually when we get into looking at some of the circulatory and thinking about nerve because of the attachment of the limbs to the trunk. Okay, abdominal muscles. What's this big one? External oblique. External oblique. It is the most external, most superficial, and uh, down and in, you lift that up. Internal to that is? Internal. Internal oblique. Internal oblique ends well before the midline, it inserts into a connective tissue sheet, which is known as? Transverse sheet. The a generic oh. name for a connective tissue sheet is? Yeah. Aponeurosis. Aponeurosis. So action all the way to the midline, even though the muscle fibers end here. And then below that is the? Transversus. Transversus, which gets closer to the midline. Here's more of an aponeurosis here. Down either side of the midline is rectus. rectus abdominis. And so those are your four mammalian um, abdominal muscles. Relatively thin, but the fact that there are multiple layers and the fibers run different ways adds to their strength, much like the concept of plywood. Um, all of them, somebody's got the actions, it probably says something like compresses, supports the abdomen. Right? Confirm. As does the rectus abdominis. All four of them do that. Rectus abdominis is also important in just ventroflexion. So for a cat, a cheetah, or this house cat, this is important in that ventroflexion that we'll see in the film tomorrow. Is that the same in the human? Yes. It's almost virtually exactly the same. Almost virtually exactly. <laughs> and this cat is so well... Um, developed that you can actually see these connective tissue bands, which I guess would be called raphe, and you can see so that these there are actually segments of the rectus abdominis, which would, if 
I really wanted to show you, I could show you, develop into a six pack. <laughs> but not today. <laughs> Give me a couple of years. He might be able to, but uh, you don't. See, you don't. You don't, you don't want to see my keg. Okay. Yes. When people, this is kind of a side, but when you work muscle.